So, welcome everybody to Wankong once again. Yay. Yay. Welcome to some new people. That's very really nice. Maybe they will find my jokes funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, apart from that, I'm going back to normal keynote, but here was very different with the staging fight and everything. Kind of different, so this time back to a more standard keynote, but I want to go over the things we discussed last year, the decision we made, and talk a little about how it went, and what we can change after that. Actually, two separate steps, but I put that on the slides. Each slide is the decision we taken, and then possible things we should discuss from there. So, because it's a normal keynote, so everybody is able to relax when you start. You can feel safe now. We <laughs> <laughs> missed that for a couple of years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, well, same old, same old. It's actually, the growth is has been slower past few years, which I think reflects what we've been feeling, that the activity is down and wine is no longer super exciting and it's just the old timers like us <laughs> feel it's interesting but nobody cares anymore. <laughs> well, it's not that bad, but clearly the interest is, is less than it used to be. A lot of stuff but just works. Yeah. Especially if the old stuff. Yes, maybe we are done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one. It's, it's it, yeah, sure. There was a lot of existing code and we make small changes, but there is less huge new developments. So the growth is slower, but it's still growing. So. Okay, so last year, the changes we made, probably the biggest one, <coughs> sign of buy that we are now requesting on every patch. And I don't know how everybody feels about it, but I'm very happy with it. I think it works very well and has made my life a lot easier. Because we now. <laughs> if you don't like it, well, too bad. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so but that's clarity with the maintainer who needs to sign off before you look at it, so that, that makes it. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's, it's when a patch has a sign off from someone else, it's a lot easier. Just trust someone who has looked into it, and previously, people would look at the badges, but I was never really sure whether they really looked or if there were no objections, then does it mean it's okay or does it mean is it you didn't look? So yeah, it's, it's really, for me at least, it's, it's a major improvement. It has made getting patches in slightly harder in some cases because not all the maintainers have the same opinions and some are even more strict than I am. <laughs> Surprisingly, you want what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> makes, me look, makes me look good. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a bad thing, but it may not have been what people expected. The sign of by some expectation was maybe that it would be easier to get stuff in when well, actually some cases it's not, but quality is, is very good, I think, so even when some maintainers are more strict than I would be, I think it's, it's for the best. So. The other thing that this has made possible is for people to submit patches written by somebody else. I think this is also working fairly well. I still want to encourage people to submit their own patches, but we have seen quite a few instances where someone would sign off on a patch from 
from what yeah, it's in sending in and I think that that's work. I'm I'm comfortable with doing it this way. We still get proper authorship information and we still get a good review on the batch. So I think that that's also a good change. And one thing I've also implemented is to send emails automatically when the batch status changes. And you are probably all sick of these emails, but for occasional contributors, I think that's a really nice change. Several people have said that <coughs> yeah, they really liked it. Makes them feel oh, warm and fuzzy. <laughs> Even though the batches is rejected, you get a nice email. <laughs> <laughs> That's an improvement. Don't have to feel bad about rejecting matches. The things we still need to spend some time and maybe discuss here is there are still many patches that don't have a reviewer. We have a maintainer file now where people can list themselves a maintainer, but there are many areas that don't have someone. And I'm finding it difficult to assign these patches to somebody. So there are still many patches that fall to the cracks. And I'm hoping we can discuss and maybe come up with ideas how to handle that. I know that some people have said that they are willing to review patches even if it's not their area, but somehow I find it difficult to pick someone on a, given, on a given batch who is going to be the right person for that. I don't know, it's a bit difficult, so I'm hoping we can come up with ideas to, to solve that. Communication is improved, I think, but still not great. Still not always very nice to people, especially new people. I'm also hoping that now that I'm back in Switzerland, I will be on a time zone where I can participate more on IRC. From Japan, I used to read the IRC conversations the next day, so it's hard, hard to participate meaningfully. And one thing that has been suggested was actually still is well, a suggestion last year, is still a suggestion is to switch to a different patch tracker, because right now it's just a bunch of scripts and Emacs code. And maybe we can find something better. Patchwork was the leading candidate. I haven't really had time to investigate, and, and we can discuss that if people have experience with other patch trackers, of someone feels the urge to write Emacs compatibility code for patchwork or something <laughs> like that. So that I don't have to read myself. That would be nice. The other thing is to save stable branch. So we now have properly maintained stable branch. Yay. <laughs> Thanks oh, to no. Michael. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it works well. I'm very glad that Michael is doing that work because I wasn't doing a good job of that and I don't want to do it. So I want to be up to 1.8 or 9 or 10 by this time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good. We did it's have one good. regression. What? We did have one regression. We had one regression. One. So you need a 1.8.6. <laughs> <laughs> I have already registered for that, but... Yeah. yeah. So yeah, this, I think, is working very well. One issue we have is that it hasn't made it into all the distributions. Mm -hmm. And it is still shipping 1.6. That's... No, actually, um, Ubuntu 3 switched uh, in October to 1.8.5. Yeah. So it has <laughs> <laughs> Take a year. <laughs> so yeah, one thing we are 
considering you know, discussed with Sebastian is to do our own stable packages. Right yeah. now we only do packages for the development branch. And I think this would be a nice improvement, <coughs> especially on bug tracker when we always tell people to upgrade and when they don't have packages, they can't upgrade. So I think, don't think there's any major problem doing that, Sebastian, some concern about network bandwidth, but we can address that. The other major thing was the integration with one staging. So we have merged the bug tracker. I think this is working well. I put some statistics now that it's all in the bug tracker. You can look at what happened. We had about 100 bugs that have been fixed that had a patch in staging. Out of a thousand, so we have about 10% of the bugs that are fixed by going to staging. Which, I mean, I don't know how you want to interpret that. We still have about 200 bugs open where there is a patch in staging that fixes bug. This is also, I mean, you can see it as a good thing or a bad thing. It does suggest that there are many open bugs where we know the solution, even if the patch that in staging is not correct. It points out where the problem is. It should make it easier to fix the bug. So I'm hoping we can reduce that. This, these are bugs that should be easier to fix than the normal ones. We already have a patch. And if you look at staging, there are 300 something patch sets, about 1,000 patches. Again, whether that's good or bad is a matter of opinion. I mean, Did the number go down? It went up. <coughs> so last year, we had about 600 patches in staging. And now it's up to 1,000. It's an issue for Sebastian because he needs to do all the merges, but I, I would be interested in hearing more about what, how you feel about that. I think if these are patches that should go upstream but don't, then it's a problem. If most of them are experimental patches, then actually having more of them, I think, is a good. It means we have more things that are being tried out. And the role of staging is to experiment. <coughs> so in a sense, having more patches to experiment with is a good thing. But I don't really have a good feeling of which is which. So maybe you can give us some, some thoughts later on. One thing we discussed <coughs> so with Sebastian was to merge the ISC channels. There is still a one staging channel, which is kind of quiet these days. And so the idea was to bring people over to the, to the wine channels, wine HQ or wine hackers, depending. And I mean, that, that's easy to do unless anybody objects to that. Just means that when people come to one channels with staging questions, we answer them instead of telling them to go to one staging. <coughs> we also discuss there are still steps you can take on a website too. There's still a staging website that you can merge, make it into a wiki, wiki page on ManageQ, things like that. So I'm hoping we can continue with the integration and bring staging even closer than it is now. But overall, I think it, it worked well. And I hope you agree. I do. Good. <coughs> so, traditional graph of number of commits. And as you can see, the number of commits went down fairly steeply about two years ago. And it's 
going back up. And I think that is part of that is because of staging and the work we've been doing, both because we bought patches in from staging and be both because also because it encouraged people to get more active in a sense. Having the staging people telling us, well, we have all these patches and you don't, it's kind of motivated people to to write more patches in a way to show staging that we can do it ourselves. <laughs> so at least for some people that has been a motivation. Either way I think it's it's a nice it's a nice improvement and I hope it continues. I don't think we are ever going to go back to the levels we had about five, six years ago when activity was really at the top. And same as with the lines of course we see decline in the in the interest in wine <coughs> in flux of new developers and things like that. So it's Getting slower. Still nice to see it pick up. On the <coughs> open branch, the major change is we have binary packages made by the staging people. That is a very nice improvement that people test much more easily than when they have to build from source. So that's very nice. We <coughs> have, in theory, time-based releases. We haven't really tried it yet because we're supposed to do a release every year, and it's been a year since we decided that. <laughs> <laughs> but so we release tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> the yeah, we release still in December. With the <laughs> yeah. So the decision was that we release in the fall. So we have until December 21st, <laughs> technically. Um, I did want to call freeze before WineConf, because we always have discussions and new ideas come up, and people want to try changes. And if you're in the middle of code freeze, then it's kind of frustrating that you're going to try out the new ideas. So WineConf is a bit late in the year compared to last year, so the release is also come a bit late, but my plan is to start cold freeze in a few weeks after one comp. So we have we had a release yesterday, so there's a release two weeks from now where we can hopefully put things we have done here and in the next few days. We will fix all the tests next to the so we can get this in. And then start cold freeze in December and hopefully release around the end of the year, beginning of the new year. That's plan for development branch. And as usual, is the time to fix regressions. We have uh, 187 regressions at the moment. We release one without age with 140 or something, 20? No, more than that. 160, I think. Ah, okay. okay. So it's actually it's We're not that bad. Not bad. Yeah, the number of regressions has not been going up. Well, then can we compare regressions from 1.8 to 1.8, or from TIP to 1.8? Uh, you know, like if 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 it's if it's an old regression, like it regressed in 1.6, then we don't care, right? But <laughs> <laughs> so. <I regret>. <laughs> <laughs> a bit hard to see, but it shows regression that they've been reported in red and fixed in green. And see the difference. We very nicely see the code freeze periods where we fix a lot of regressions. But we also see that the number of reported regressions is going down. So we have a lot fewer <coughs> new regressions than we used to. That's very encouraging. It's also a sign that the code base is getting more mature and are making less drastic changes. Or the user base is going down. 
Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what, what we don't see here is how many the current regressions are very old. Right. And a lot of them are. So there is like a, a base of maybe a hundred regressions that have been in Fiverr that we may not be able to make much progress on, but still we have quite a few new regressions and I hope that during cold freeze you can address that and go down to 150 maybe. That would be a nice code. Um, well, I was going to show the all of shape, but it's going to be tricky, so <laughs> I'm sure you look at it every day anyway, so <laughs> you will know. I'm always on top, so <laughs> You can be sure of that, but actually, I'm always getting close. Who? <laughs> Henry. I mean, yeah. Mm. No wonder he didn't want to come. <laughs> <laughs> He's not here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm three regressions ahead. Yeah. I fixed his problem, so <laughs> <laughs> he should watch out. Okay, then, trying to some controversy so that we can have some debate. <laughs> Otherwise, we have to spend two days fixing tests. <laughs> 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 so, my idea is that the next release should be 2.0 because we are 1.9, and technically, after 1.9, you have 1.10, but then people will confuse that with. 1.1.0 and it's not clear to everybody that 1.10 is after 1.9 so 2.0 is much nicer. 1.A? 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 could do that. Yes. <laughs> 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 But after 2.0, then it's open. So we can continue as we did. Table releases to the 2, 2.4, and so on. We can go to 3.0. Decide that right now we will always have one dot something, but the one is not really meaningful, so we can decide to get rid of that. Use major numbers, three dot or, or simply three, four, five, like some projects do. Can use code names. <laughs> 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 I hate code names. <laughs> so people animals, like them. So if you can go to any months, twenty seventeen. Wine names. Wine, wine or something. Well, okay. Oh yeah, we have to use wine names. So. <laughs> <laughs> I had already one name release, right? Yeah, I named one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't really lend itself to <laughs> number scheme. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, if there are other ideas, we have like 25 people, so we have 25 different ideas. We can <laughs> debate that. And if Just we don't mm -hmm. get to a solution, we like continue. Of the <laughs> Personally, I find dates to be really nice where some people are switching over to using the year, then the month, and the day. That's a good point. That's we had that before, too. Yes. I mean, it didn't really work before, but now that we do time-based releases, then yes, would be, would be an option. That's a good point. So yeah, that's one of the topics we can discuss in the meetings, what meetings. A little about the roadmap, it's always difficult to do roadmap in one because for one thing people work on what they feel like working on and also driven by applications, so we work on what applications require which we cannot really credit in text. But one thing that's being worked on is the heat support. <laughs> Eric, it's very promising, it's been a long time getting in. I don't know, Eric is frustrated, but 
it's getting in slowly, mm. bit by bit. And that's going to be very interesting, not only for joysticks, mm. but also later on for potentially USB, things like that. That's a major architecture change. The with of course, the 3D, 11 is being worked on, 12 is going to be worked on at some point, and Vulcan support, which I cannot really give me details, but there are going to be some interesting developments on Vulcan. We are looking into that. The other major thing is Android support. You may have heard that we released crossover on Android. And the code is not yet in wine. Still hoping to merge it. I was hoping to merge it before to the door, but well, it's kind of tricky because of Java. So merging the C code is easy, but merging the Java code and making use of the Java build system is really painful. Java build system is awful. <laughs> Technical <laughs> term. And so I'm not yet sure how to do that in one. We have, currently we are building this as part of crossover, and we have Java build scripts in crossover, but making that useful for Wine is, is tricky. And at the same time, I don't want to put Java code in Wine if it's not built by default. So I'm still struggling with that. And the other nice thing we have with Android is support for Chromebooks. That recently, Google announced that they support Android apps on Chromebooks, which is very interesting for us because to be honest, one on a tablet or on a phone is not all that interesting. It's fun, but it's not really usable. But on a Chromebook, where you have a keyboard and mouse, it becomes very complicated. And more of them are Intel. And most of the Chromebooks are Intel, so mine just works. Intel Android devices, as well as tablet and phones, there are really few of them, so it's not all that interesting. QMU is sadly still a bit too slow to be usable. And that's also a running joke, but <laughs> <laughs> it may actually come true because one of the interesting things with the Chromebooks is that they use Wayland. And so right now we have, we can run the Android version on Chromebooks but potentially we can do a Chromebook native version of Wine using Wayland. Because the OS is Linux, so all we need is a display driver, and if we have a Wayland driver, then it will run natively on Chromebooks. In developer mode. If you hack your Chromebook. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Should be fun. At least, in my view, it's at least a good reason to write a Wayland drive until now. Really, X is working fast. So why would we need a Wayland drive? But for Chromebooks, it that really makes sense. Okay, that's all I have. Any <coughs> questions? Everybody. <laughs> it was a normal keynote, so <laughs> you all went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Alexander. Thank you.